So for this next recipe, we're going to do a dry fry uh, or dry sauteed style okra dish. Uh, okra is used a huge amount in uh, India. Uh, the tropical weather is perfect for growing it and it's a staple in a lot of Indian uh, homes. So the uh, the way to, to choose a really good okra is to make sure that it's not too large. The smaller, thinner and slimmer they are, the, uh, the better the okra is likely to be. You're looking for a smooth skin without too much um, uh, fur on it uh, and also you want to make sure that the seeds inside are not too large and the ribs are not too hard which is what is going to uh, leave you with a tough chewy uh, vegetable. So one of the ways in which uh, you tell whether an okra is uh, a good one is by breaking the tip. Uh, if it breaks off cleanly in your hand like that you've got a, a good specimen. A lot of stores these days, as particularly the Indian stores, have signs saying do not break the tips of the okra. Um, so uh, another way that you can tell is by rolling it between your fingers and making sure that you don't you can't feel or uh, sometimes if the okra is very fibrous you can even hear the crackling of the ribs inside so you want to make sure that that is not part of your okra choosing experience. Um, so uh, what we do for the okra here, uh, a lot of Indian recipes will use the okra very finely sliced into rounds which it can take an awfully long time uh, to prepare. Uh, this luckily is a little less labor intensive and what we do is we first of all wash, uh, thoroughly wash and then uh, dry the okra. It's very important that you dry it really well in a um, uh, dry a tea towel, something something like this. Uh, and you can also use paper towels on top to blot off the extra excess water. Uh, too much moisture on the skin of the okra in the pan will create steam, which creates more of the slime. Um, so you want to try and uh, make sure that they're as dry as possible after washing. Uh, then you take each individual uh, okra and you cut off the head as close to the top as possible. You discard that part. Uh, you hold the okra between your thumb and index finger and you just slice straight down the middle so that you get two uh, lengthwise halves. Uh, this is a pound of okra that's been sliced in that way that we're going to use. Uh, if you have a particularly bendy uh, specimen, then you just cut it in half and uh, cut each of the halves lengthwise if you can't get the knife to go all the way down. So that's, that's how we prepare the, prepare the okra. Uh, then the way in which it is, so this is partly um, sautéed and partly roasted. So you do the sautéing on the on the gas and then after it's uh, the spices have mixed in and it's uh, developed a little bit of uh, caramelization you then put it into a preheated oven for 15 or 20 minutes. So it's partly roasted, partly sautéed. Uh, so the oil that we're using for this recipe is grapeseed but you can use any neutral flavored oil like canola or vegetable. So get your pan up to medium heat and put in two to three tablespoons of oil. So some of the other ingredients that we're using for this recipe uh, that I wanted to go through. One of them is fairly unusual, or two of them are fairly unusual. Uh, one of them is this, which is called asafoetida. Asafoetida comes in jars such as this uh, at uh, local Indian stores, and you can also get it online. Uh, so it's spelled A S A F E T D I A. T-I-D-A, sorry, asafoetida, and it, in uh, the Indian language it's called hing, H-I-N-G, which is a lot simpler and easier to remember. So um, hing is a really interesting spice. It um, uh, doesn't have the most pleasant aroma when it's in its raw form, but when it goes into hot oil, some amazing alchemy occurs and it uh, resembles the flavor profile of onions and garlic. Uh, so this is this spice is particularly used a great deal by the Jain community, J-A-I-N, uh, in India. And they are a religious community that um, uh, discourages or even bans the uh, consumption of any root vegetables. So no onions, no garlic, carrots, potatoes, nothing like that. So um, there, uh, the belief is that the when the ground is 
the ground is desecrated when the earth is disturbed by pulling the, the vegetable out. Uh, so they use a, a tremendous amount of this spice uh, and uh, things like mustard seeds and things like that which uh, gives them the, the flavors in their food. Uh, so this uh, recipe uses just a little bit of hing. You do use it in very, very small quantities. So a jar like this can easily last you a decade or longer. Uh, some people do say that the, the smell is especially strong for them, especially if it's something that you're not accustomed to. So it's advisable to keep it in a Ziploc bag in your pantry. Uh, the other unusual ingredient that we're going to be using is this seed, which is called ajwain, spelt like that, A-J-W-A-I-N. Um, the English name, I believe, is carom, C-A-R-O-M, but it is very rarely labeled as such in, um, in the stores or even online. So when you go to buy it, this is the name that you would be looking for. Uh, Ajwain is a uh, distant cousin of oregano, and it is used in um, a lot of fried uh, Indian preparations, whether it's sautéed or particularly deep fried, you'll see it in a lot of deep fried preparations. Uh, not only because of the taste, but also because it has um, tremendously beneficial digestive um, properties and it helps uh, he dish heavier, richer dishes to go down more easily. So when we begin this dish, we're going to be using, we're going to be starting with our whole spices, which is the cumin seed and the ajwain, along with the hing. So hing needs to go into hot oil in order to bloom and produce those oniony, garlicky properties that I spoke of earlier. So we keep the heat on medium. We sprinkle in the hing. It will sizzle a little bit. You don't want to let it be in there for too long. Follow it with the cumin seed and the ajwain seed. Give that a bit of a stir. Sizzle away. And then follow with all of your sliced okra. So you need a nice big pan that will be able to accommodate all the vegetable. Give it a stir. Sprinkle over some salt. And then we're going to go in with the other ingredients, which are uh, ground turmeric, which gives the color as well as the uh, health properties. Some red chili powder for heat, which is entirely optional. You can leave that out. We've got just a little bit of freshly grated ginger. If you don't have freshly grated, you can use ground ginger powder. We've got some ground coriander. And we've got a little bit of sugar just to balance everything out. So in no particular order, all of those spices go in. Just make sure that they are nicely sprinkled over so that you don't get any concentration of spices in any one particular area because it tends to stick to the, to the okra. I love how it goes brighter green as it cooks initially. The red chili powder, ginger, the okra will shrink a little as it cooks. At this stage you want to keep it over medium high to high heat because you're looking for the okra to get some color and you want the spices to cook in the oil that is coating the vegetable. Ground coriander and sugar.
So initially you stir a fair amount to get the spices to meld nicely. And then once that's done, you leave it be for a couple of minutes at a time so that the okra has a chance to really make contact with the pan and get a little bit of caramelization going on it. So don't stir it too much after the initial period. And then you have your oven preheated to 375 and you pop it in there for 15 to 20 minutes before you garnish and serve. Mm -hmm.